In UML, you can, if you wish, associate a state diagram, or state machine if you prefer, with any class, or indeed any classifier. Now what this does is it describes the way in which the entire state space of the system, I can't spell initialized, splits up into qualitatively different states. So an object could be in a different state in the sense that, for example, a client of the object might need to know that it was only reasonable to send it certain messages when it's in this state. Okay. Now this is dangerous, of course. It's better if your objects are really simple. And if they're really simple, you don't need to have state diagrams for them. But suppose we do. Suppose we've got our component here. When it's first created, this is a start marker, when it's first created, its initial state is something we're going to call uninitialized. Okay? It's not ready for use yet. Now suppose that somebody sends it an initialized message. From the point of view of our object of the class that we're drawing a model of here, um, that's an event. Okay, A message coming in is an event. And it's an event which causes the object to change state. Which causes it to change state to a state that we'll call ready. And once it's in the ready state, we can get it to do stuff. Let's say at this point it's ready to receive messages, such as, doesn't really matter what we call it, let's call it do it. Okay? So it can do some work at this point. Okay? Now, let's say that after it's been in the ready state for some while, the normal course of affairs is it's going to get turned off. It's going to get turned off by somebody sending it the turn off message. Okay. And let's call it state here. Defunct. Okay. And now what we're saying is that the protocol of use of this object is that it now stays in the defunct state until it actually gets destroyed and garbage collected or reference to it is thrown away because it's not useful anymore, something like that. Okay, so we're nearly there. As you can see, this is pretty much like finite state machines or automata that you might have seen before. So we've got three qualitatively distinct states of our object, um, and we've got events that move, cause us to move between the states. Now, a protocol state machine is supposed to describe all the possible um, events that can arise in particular situations. So we have to ask ourselves things like, what should happen if somebody sends the do it message to an object? when it's in the uninitialized state. Well, it's okay for us to just to say that shouldn't happen and not put it on the diagram. Okay? It's the things which are legitimate which should be on the diagram. We might ask ourselves, what's supposed to happen if somebody sends the turn off message to an object when it's in the uninitialized state? That's probably surprising but reasonable. And what we probably want to happen in that case is that it moves directly to the defunct state. So let's show that like this. Okay. Now, what else is there to say? Um, notice the box shapes. They're a bit of a nuisance to draw on paper. They are rectangles with rounded corners. Um, the start state I already mentioned, that indicates what the initial state of an object or upon creation is. This is the stop state. The Reaching the stop state indicates that the object is completely dead. It's no longer existing in the system. It's been garbage collected or whatever. Um, that's probably about all there is to say about a really simple protocol state machine.